Tubi. All right, thank you, thank you. Hey everybody, my name is Miller Tubi. Welcome to a speed run of The Messenger. So for those who haven't heard of this game, this is a indie platformer that came out in 2018, made by Sabotage Studio. Um, so the category we're doing today, or actually, let me describe the game a little bit. It's a, it's a 2D platformer. Um, so it's heavily inspired by games like Ninja Gaiden, Revenge of Shinobi, every old ninja platformer this game takes a lot of inspiration from, makes a lot of funny references to, et cetera. Um, just to go into the background of the category I'm running, 8-bit, um, just as a little background of the game, uh, this game is kind of split into three acts. There's an 8-bit act where the game begins, where you go through about eight levels, and then after that, you go into what's called the future, where the game takes on a 16-bit aesthetic, and you go through two more levels. Then after clipping those two levels, uh, the game actually opens up and becomes a full-fledged Metroidvania, where you go back through those levels while switching between 8 and 16-bit as you traverse through them. Uh, so this is just the 8-bit section. So at the end of this run, do not be alarmed. I'll still have control of the character. There will be no credits. There will be nothing really conclusive about the end of the run. I'll just say time and it'll be over. Um, but yeah, just know there's more to the game, uh, but the 8-bit section is the main speedrun category, and it's very much designed on purpose to feel like a game on its own, so it's still gonna be a pretty good time. So I think I've gone ahead and uh, introduced as much as I could here at the beginning, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, does anyone have a suggestion for a good, audience suggestion for a good, appropriate file name? I hear Master Chief. I don't think I can fit all of that, but I can do, I think I can do Master Chief. There you go, I got Master Chief. All right, so our file name is Master Chief. I totally spelled it right. Can't tell me otherwise. So I'm ready to go. Uh, I don't know who's doing the timer, but. All right, so I'm gonna count down and let's get started in three, two, one, go. All right, so we're starting off here at Ninja Village. Uh, this is where a lot of the game's backstory is. I'm not going into any of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just um, get to explaining the main movement method in this game. It's known as Cloud Step. So in this game, anytime I attack either an enemy, an enemy's projectile, or one of these lanterns coming up, I actually get an additional jump and I can actually chain these as well. So this is our main way of getting around. So lots of that. And then this is their way of, you know, getting you comfortable with it. So going into a couple more cutscenes here. So we're just gonna keep it moving. All right, let's see if we can get any good luck shards. So the currency in this game, they're called time shards. Uh, we're gonna need them for a couple shops later in the run. Oh, we got one for good luck, that's good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and gather time shards to buy things from the shop. Uh, the first one's gonna be coming up in this next level, which is going to be the official first level of the game. So. That concludes Ninja Village has been destroyed. It's very tragic, lots of people died. Yeah! Death! <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to the first stage of the game, Autumn Hills. So this is the first real level. So here we're gonna go ahead and do, show off all the basic movement. Um, there's a couple tricks here, like this one called the Turtle Boost. 
Uh, so when we attack those guys head on, they actually um, slow us down. So what we do is we actually like reverse our momentum so we can actually go faster as we run into them. So making good use of the cloud step here. And we got 40. Nice. So we're going to meet our friend the shopkeeper. Uh, unfortunately, I'm skipping all of the dialogue in this game, but he's definitely one of the funniest characters in the game. So we got two upgrades right now. We got the climbing claws, which allow me to climb walls. And we also got a move called strike of the ninja. So this lets me attack enemy projectiles. So now I can use those for cloud stuff like this. So from this point, we're just gonna go ahead and make our way through this first level. Um, and we have a little damage boost coming up here. It's actually kind of RNG, so if you get it, hey, we got it. All right, so there are times where it hits you, but it actually knocks you back, so you can't do that. But we got it, so we're good to go. So we're gonna make our way into some water here. So I'm actually gonna be a little quiet. So if you notice the audio here, it goes underwater style. So we have another damage boost coming up here. Next up, we got what's called Spike Tower. Let's see if we can make our way over this. Yep. So we gotta make sure to get as much money as we can for this uh, next shop coming up at the end of the level. We need about 130 by the time we get to the next, the shop at the end of the level. So we're pretty much good on shards at this point. So now we just get to go ahead and wrap up the stage. All right, so in this shop, we're gonna buy two upgrades. We're buying shurikens and we're gonna buy the air recovery. Uh, shurikens are pretty self-explanatory. They're uh, projectile that we're going to use for a variety of uh, skips and other strats, including this one cycle here. And air recovery lets us control where we actually recover when we get in here, which we're going to use for a lot of damage boosting. All right, cool, got him. I actually stopped mashing for half a second, so I was a little worried there. <laughs> So our next stage here is the Forlorn Temple. So this is a very important level later in the game. That was Forlorn Temple. Now we're on the catacombs. So this is the actual second level. This is one of our friends, the Phobikins. He is a... Uh, also irrelevant to this run. So this is Catacombs. This entire level is very, very, very cycle-based. So I'm just gonna be 
racing against the clock. And, you know, should I not make some of these cycles, I'm probably gonna die. Very dangerous early game level, unfortunately. So, let's see what we can do here. So, Mash, I'm actually gonna hand it over to you if you got any donations to read. Yes, we do actually have a donation. We have $20 from Tofurky saying, Greeting from Frames. Thank you for that donation. Just as a reminder, you could do exclamation mark donate in the chat, or if you're here with us, you can just scan the QR code, make sure to get those donations in. We are raising money for Child's Play. Thank you, thank you. So once again, another cycle for us to not get killed by. Nice. going to be coming up on one of the big skips in this level. Uh, it's a skip affectionately titled the Badonka Donk. I actually forgot exactly why it's called that, but basically there's going to be another section coming up where our friend Ruxton, which is that uh, little skeleton guy you saw at the beginning, he's going to send more enemies at us. But if we get this correct, we're actually going to skip that. So let's hope for the best. Oh, you got it. All right, cool. Yeah, so that jump there, that's like a... I don't know the exact frames, but it's a very, very tiny window. So... Oh. Unfortunately, there's no damage boost here. So I had to play that one super, super safe. So coming up, we have one last cycle of death to uh, make our way through. So I'm gonna focus here. Did we make it? We did, all right. I have gotten past that so many times, and I'm, every single time, I'm still thinking it's, this is the one that kills me. This is the one that gets me. All right, so this is Ruxton. Uh, so this is an RNG fight. There's a, it's a 50-50. He either goes high or he goes low. If he goes high, then we get a really quick kill, and we save about eight seconds. If he goes low, oh, hey. Cool. So we pretty much get to end this fight right away. RNG. So now we're on up to our way to the third level, Bamboo Creek. So this is uh, this is probably one of my favorite levels, both in the game and of the run. Uh, there's a lot of fun vertical movement here, so you're going to see a whole lot of uh, cloud steps used in very interesting ways. Curious. This game's music was composed by Rainbow Dragon Eyes, who was actually here at MAGFest a couple years ago. There's a 
Nice little skip there. For those of you wondering, hey, I thought this was a no out of bounds run, that's like the limit there. That's the one we kind of excuse. Alright, so this is BC11, aka the 11th room. So we're gonna go for a couple skips here. We messed it up the first time, let's get it again. There we go, nice. So there's about 30 strats to get up there. Um, I went with the, basically the OG one called the N2, named after N2, one of the runners who, who discovered it. Uh, so because his name is N2, uh, all the other like variations of the strat are named G2 and I am very low on money, so I actually have to go down here. All right, so all those other strats are named G2, B2, just different letters and variations of two. All right, so we needed 251 shards when we get to that waterfall there, so we can have enough for the next shop. So this is the next stage, Howling Grotto. Would this be an okay time for some donations? Yep. Okay, we have three, we have a $50 donation from Ness, and then in parentheses it says original character. So thank you for that. We have $15 from Rip Salty saying, you have a very nice hat on, which I agree with. Love Jet Set Radio. And we have an anonymous $5 donation saying, super fun, thanks. So thank you guys so much for your generosity. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I heard that Rip Salty guy is doing Super Mario 64 at 7.30. So uh, that should be a good one. All right, so we actually did a couple shops there during the donation read. Um, so we got a new upgrade called the Wingsuit, which lets me glide in the air. And we bought two other upgrades. Uh, one is the Wingsuit Attack, which lets me slash things while I'm gliding. And the other one is called the Underwater Boost, which gives me a speed boost while I'm underwater. Uh, so the main important one with that is that we're actually going to use that for a strat later on. Because the uh, the speed boost there, actually, we can carry over the momentum. And then that lets us go really fast as we jump out the water. Alright, so that right there was called the DK skip. We call this room the DK room because it's uh, very reminiscent of that first level. And if you're fast enough, you can actually skip. When I jumped through the uh, saws there, I got to skip the cycle, so. Also one of those very scary cycles where if I didn't do that, I'd be dead, so. Unfortunately, the game has a lot of that. <laughs> <clears throat> so here we're coming up on what we affectionately called the Yeet, which is where we use the underwater speed boost to jump out and carry that speed over, and there's also a very hard variation of that where we actually carry a cloud step out of there, and we use that to double jump, and we basically we fly across that pit with the increased speed. It's very cool, we call it the God Eat. And there are also lots and lots of Yeats in the Any% percent category, which is the category that includes the Metrovania section, so in case you want to see any, any, even more than that, uh, take a look at one of those runs. So now we're coming up on the boss, known as the Emerald Golem. Um, so we're going to try to two-cycle him, his first phase here, then the second phase I'm just going to hit him and kill him. I'm going to explain that really quickly because I really need to focus here because I need to do counting, and counting is really hard.
unfortunately didn't get the cycle there. Uh oh. Oh, that's a death. <laughs> and now we get to meet our friend Corbel. So when we die, he's the one that brings us back to life. And he does it for a price. He'll take some of our time shards. But luckily he runs whenever he sees a boss. Because he's not the uh, bravest guy here. a little bit. And then this is where we learned this entire boss fight was one big misunderstanding. He was just, you know, digging for treasure with his toy and we kind of just destroyed it. And he's really sad about that. <laughs> So our next stage is Close Room Marsh. Uh, so this is a pretty straightforward level. Um, so at this point of the run, how a lot of these levels tend to go is we'll get an upgrade in one level, and then the next one is kind of like, okay, you got used to it, so now you get to really play around with it. So here we're just gonna be doing a lot more gliding and glide attacking while we make our way through some very long rooms including one coming up here called the right room. This is the longest single room in the game. And the strat here is to hold right. So while I'm doing that, if we have any more donations to read, go ahead and let's do it. Yeah, all right, we have two more donations. We have a $50 donation from Alternate Costume Ness. Thank you for that. And we also have a $5 donation from Plastic Stomach saying, is it live or is it Memorex? So thank you guys again. Keep on donating. We are currently sitting at $4,537.00 out of our $5,000 stretch goal. All right, we have successfully held right. right here with our shurikens. Nice, got it. So next up we have a room called the Bully Room. And you'll see why it's called that right now. Yeah, that's a damage boost room. Um, on a good day, you're taking one. Most days, you're taking two. Some days, that level can really beat you up, really bully you, and you're taking more than two. So we have another cycle to try to run past here. So coming up is the boss, the Quill Shroom Queen. This is probably the hardest boss, not really the fight, but just to execute quickly. Uh, we're gonna try to do enough damage to her to make her skip her phase, where she tries to hit us with her whip. 
And to do that, we have to do just enough DPS. Let's see if we got it. Nice. So unfortunately, we did lose a little time here because uh, if you do die here, uh, Quarbo comes out and has like extra dialogue there. So if you get to this point without dying, A, Steam gives you achievement, B, you save time. So next up, we got Searing Crags. Uh, in this level, we're going to introduce probably my favorite item and my favorite part of the run. We're going to get an item called the Rope Dart, which is a grappling hook. and. Um, all I can say really is that this is when the game gets real, real fast. And also we're going to buy some health upgrades. Uh, we've got an extra hit point and also we have the ability to have enemies drop health. So the rope dart here can latch onto enemies, it can latch onto lanterns, it can latch onto walls. And the rule of thumb here is RDE, which is rope dart everything. You can also use it to climb walls faster. Uh, it's called the rope dart climb. Basically, we quickly alternate between jumping and then rope darting the wall again. And with enough rhythm and done just quickly enough, you can just scale walls at a very high speed. Alright, so coming up, we're going to have uh, what's called the teleport. If I get it, I'll try to explain it. Um, if not, then... Oh, there it is. Alright, so I did not splice. Uh, basically, what happened was... Oop. I guess we're taking the right side. Oh. So basically, what happened there was... Um, when you kill an enemy before you actually grapple onto it, the game gets really confused. And uh, if you time it to where the first frame of the enemy appearing from off screen appears, you'll actually zip to that enemy in what basically looks like a weird splice frame skip. So this is Colos and Susus, who, as you probably realize, their names is Colossus. Alright, no one did a class this roar. I was hoping for that. <laughs> uh, so this is a tag team boss fight. And it's also probably the most RNG heavy point of the run. Uh, so there are attacks we want them to do and don't want them to do. Unfortunately, they did the tag team attack, which is one of the ones we don't want. Oh, uh, we got uh, one last hit on me. So that was pretty decent RNG. Um, other than the tag team attack, they did the attacks I do want them to use, which is just their individual ones and the rock attack. So that concludes Searing Crags. So this next level is called Glacial Peak. So if Searing Crags was our level to learn and get used to the rope dart, this is our level to just go crazy with it. Um, so I'm going to do that and let's also read off some donations. So there's a lot of vertical climbing. This is basically just the main way to go is up. I'm 
And also for the viewers at home, if I can get some shovel please in the chat. Thank you. Another teleport, so blink and you'll miss it. And here we go. Then we have this fun final room in here. Includes the glacial peak. So we're about to go into the final level of the run, which means unfortunately our time together is almost over. So this is the Tower of Time, also known as the Tower of Time Loss, Tower of Tragedy, Tower of Trolling, Tower of Terror. Um, so we got a lot of you know fun with movement, you know going fast and everything. But now we're back into the eternal prison of making cycles and not dying. So also this is a very just difficult level just as a whole. So I'm going to basically not be talking through most of this. And just tell you that most of the strats here range from crazy to absolutely suicidal. Like this one. Oh, and I messed it up already. So that one's called the Hail Mary. Um, if done cleanly, you damage boost all the way down to 0% health. Or down to 1% health, I'm sorry and you just speed through that room. So damage boost through him. And now we are at the mercy of RNG with these whiz robes here. Uh, their teleport path is RNG, so... Hey, they actually helped me out here. Oh, and these lasers here. Uh, so the spikes in the game, as you saw through the entire run, those do three damage. So these lasers do four. So. And unfortunately, we didn't get any health drops in this room. So we have to do this next room the, uh, the slowest way and just wait for the cycles here. Had I gotten at least one, uh, we can go for some damage boost strats called French and French Connection, depending on which method you use. Either you damage boost off the spikes or the lasers themselves, and you climb for your life. <laughs> damage boosting, another suicidal strat. We're gonna wait for that one, okay. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I hope I don't curse myself, but we're pretty much smooth sailing, despite having one HP and seeing all these lasers that can kill me, etc. 
And also we're gonna abuse hitboxes here to actually skip this last part of the room and hit the crystal over the wall. Now one last climb for our lives. And now we're on to the final boss of the run. This is the Arcane Golem. Um, so the strat here is we're going to use the Rope Dart's Invincibility. I forgot to mention that during the Colos and Sisters fight, but when you Rope Dart and attack, you get iframes. So we're just going to stay in this guy's face, abuse the iframes, and burn him down. And time is going to be when this fight is over. And time. All right, so that concludes the 8 bit section. So, uh, just a couple quick plugs. Um, so if you want to, you know, check this game out or check more runs out either of like the linear category or the any percent where they play through the 16-bit section and then also the rest of the game, uh, you can just uh, take a look at speedrun.com slash the messenger. Uh, we also have a cool Discord for learning this game, learning to run. Uh, there's actually currently a tournament going on for this category. Uh, that's being streamed and uploaded on GG Speedruns, their Twitch and YouTube. So I'm currently in that. Fortunately, I'm currently in the loser's bracket, but, you know, it'd be like that. Oh, I'm definitely going to try. I'm down but not out. And, um, yeah, that pretty much concludes it. Uh, what was my final time? Final time is 33 and 9 seconds. Okay. I think without loads, that's probably at 32 something. We also have a couple of donations that came in. I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, okay. No, yeah. no problem. Uh, Ryudo, $20 donation. Take the money I never spent on WinRAR and my unregistered Hypercam 2. Thank you very much. Sorry, WinRAR. Uh, Mom, $10 donation. You are very handsome and talented. <laughs> Thank you for the donation. Joe Car Keys with a $5 donation saying, let's go. <laughs> and finally, we have a $20 donation from Andre Zavaglia. Deadly work. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you guys very much for, thank you guys very much for tuning in for another speed run. Thank you, uh, Miller2B. Great job. Uh, that's actually going to be the end of my shift as well. Uh, my name is Mash the Stampede. I appreciate you guys sticking around. I hope you've enjoyed it. But there's still plenty more speedrunning to come. We're actually going to be moving on after this intermission to Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, any percent pirate mode. Uh, so definitely stick around for that as well. And uh, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their MAGFest. Also, now that everyone's awake, can I get another Colossus Roar? Beautiful. Music to my ears.